Hello all of our students. Today I am going to do the O Level 2020 paper which was held in March 2021. So this is paper 2. You get two parts, part A and part B. First read the instructions. You are getting additional 10 minutes reading time. So make sure when you get that time, you select five questions from part A and five questions from part B. And for the whole paper, you get three hours. Answer 10 questions, selecting five questions from part A and five questions from part B. Write the relevant steps and the correct units in answering the questions. Each question carries 10 marks. And these two formulae given, the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h and the volume of a cylinder pi r squared h. And you can ask for line papers and do those questions separately. Part A, you get question number one and then two, here are question number three, four, five, six, and then you get part B. Part B, answer five questions only. Question number seven, eight, nine, then 10, 11, and 12. So let's do this paper now. Let's take question number one. It's about percentages. We'll do this question. Amal takes a loan of 50,000 rupees from a bank for two years at an annual simple interest of 12%. Find the total interest amount he has to pay for the two years. Now this is about simple interest. So how do you find out the total interest amount? not the amount after getting the interest. So interest, you can straight away find out 12% of 50,000, 12 over 100 into 50,000. That's for one year, but it says it's for two years. So multiply this by two. So what's the value? Two zeros get cancelled out and two times five, ten, that means here thousand, thousand times twelve. Twelve thousand rupees is the total interest amount he has to pay for the two years. So how many marks for this part? So you are getting three marks according to the marking scheme. That means identify this one and multiply by this and one for the answer. So two marks for this part and one mark for the answer. Let's do the second part. Amal deposits the loan amount he obtained in a fixed deposit account that pays an annual interest of 15% compounded annually for two years. Find the amount in this account at the beginning of the second year. So Amal deposited the loan amount he obtained in a fixed deposit. So what's the loan amount? Loan amount is 50,000 rupees. Now if he deposited that amount in a bank pays 15% compound interest, what's the amount in this account at the beginning of the second year? Beginning of the second year means after the first year. So how you find out the amount after the first year? Amount after first year. You take 50,000 and multiply by 115 over 100. Now what's the coefficient you are getting? Think about, you deposit 100 rupees, so you are getting 115. So what's the multiplier? So you have to multiply by 115 over 
100. So this is the value after the first year. If you don't want to do this way, you can do finding the interest for one year and add it to 50,000. That's also possible. Let's do this way. The two zeros multiplied by 5, 5 times 5, 25, 2 remaining, 5 times 1, 5 plus 2, 7, 5 times 1, 5. So after first year, the amount in the bank is 57,500 rupees. So how many marks? You are getting 2 marks for this part. Part 3, at the end of the two years, he withdraws the total amount in his fixed deposit account and settles his bank loan by paying the loan amount and the interest. Show that he now has more than 4,000 rupees remaining in bank. So this is at the end of the two years, he withdraws the total amount in his fixed deposit account and settles his bank loan by paying the loan amount and the interest. So here you have to first find out how much you are getting. He is getting after two years. So we found out after first year, this is 57,500. After second year, What's the amount? 57,500. Again, you have to multiply by 57,500 multiplied by, again, 15% compound interest. That means 115 over 100. Two zeros, you have to multiply 575 by 115. 100, 10 and 5. Multiply by 10 and 5. 25, 5 times 7, 35 plus 2, 37. 5 times 5, 25 plus 3, 28. When you add it, 21, then 9 plus 2, 11 plus 5, 16, 1 remaining 6. So this is the amount after the, the second year, 66,125 rupees. And now after this, he is settling his bank loan and the interest. So what's the amount there? So he needs to pay. Interest is 12,000 and the loan amount is 50,000. So we have to find out the total amount he needs to pay. Total needs to pay. That's 50,000 and 12,000. You get 62,000 he needs to pay. He is getting 66,125. So what's the remaining amount? Remaining 66,125 minus 62,000. That's 4,125. So show that. He now has more than 4,000 rupees remaining in hand. So we can say 4,125 is greater than 4,000 rupees. That means this statement is true. So you can say true. What's the amount more from 4,000? 125 rupees more. So you can write that also more than 4,000 but how much 125 rupees 
more than 4,000. Let's see how many marks we can give. So here, when you look at the marking scheme, finding this values, value after second year that you are getting two marks. And then finding the amount needs to pay, that's 62,000, just one mark. And subtraction, one mark. And writing down this statement, one mark. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five marks for third part. Then two, seven, and three, ten marks for that question. So ten marks for the whole question. Let's do question number two. This is about quadratic graphs. So you have to ask for a graph paper. So you have to draw the graph and then answer these questions. So let's do that. An incomplete table showing the y values corresponding to several x values of the quadratic function y equals x squared plus 2x minus 2 within the interval minus 4 to 2 and minus 4 and 2 both are included. Find the value of y when x equals 1. Just substitute the value. So we can, we can find the y value when x equals 1. So take the equation x squared plus 2x minus 2. Substitute x equals 1. You get here. 1 as the answer. So that means this part is 1. Then using the standard system of axes and a suitable scale, draw the graph of the given quadratic function on a graph paper according to the above table of values. So the scale is minus 4 to 2. You can take a suitable scale. Minus 4 to 2. So we'll start from minus 4 here. And we'll take 10 squares for one unit. So this is minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. So you can take y axis here. And then you can mark it. What's the minimum and the maximum of y? 6 and minus 3. So we can start from 6. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and this is the x-axis, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. Now you can draw the x-axis starting from here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. And the other side only up to 2. And you can label the x-axis. So this is the scale and you can see 10 squares, one unit both ways. So you can say this way 0 0.1 and this way also 0 0.1 when we consider very small square. 10 squares, one unit, 1 over 10 means just very small one square. So now mark the points. You take purple color, black color. Okay, so minus 4, 6. Minus 4, 6. Minus 3, 1. Minus 2, minus 2. Minus 1, minus 3. 0, minus 2. 1 and 1. 2 with 6. 2 with 6. And now we have to connect smoothly. So what's my advice? You can take the ruler just to connect the two endpoints. That's all. Then you have to connect the other points smoothly. Don't take the ruler. So we'll start from here and draw this part like this.
this and here we can draw the other one like this. So, this is the graph for this quadratic function. Let us give marks. So, you are getting one mark for finding this answer. And you already know three marks for the graph. One mark for the scale, one mark for marking the points and one mark for connecting the points smoothly. So, three marks there. Let us answer the questions using this graph. Using the graph that you drew, write the equation of its axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is the line passes through the turning point. So, here this is the axis of symmetry. What is the equation? You do not have to draw it. So, what is the equation of the axis of symmetry? Always the x value is minus 1. So, we can say x equals minus 1. Part 2. Write the interval of values of x on which the quadratic function is negative. So, negative means below the x axis. So, in this graph, here to here. So, you have to read these two points to get the range. So, what is this point? Minus 2.7. And what's the other value here? 0 0.7. So don't include equal sign. This is in between. You get all the y values negative. And the third part, C. For the graph that is obtained by translating the above graph upwards by 5 units. So the whole thing goes up by 5 units on the coordinate plane without changing the shape of the graph. So, just along the y-axis, write the coordinates of the minimum point and write the relevant quadratic function in the form y equals x plus p squared plus q form and here p and q are constants. So, the point here is Minus 1, minus 3. So, when you move 5 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this becomes the new minimum value. So, what is the point? Minus 1, 2. So, minimum is minus 1, 2. How you write down the equation? y equals x plus 1 squared plus 2 because when this is minus 1 you write this as x plus 1 and the y value you write as it is. So x plus 1 squared plus 2. Do we get a number here? You can check it whether you are getting a number here. Let us take the previous one and see what is the equation x squared. So, you are not getting a number in front. So, that is the equation you are getting. So, what is the p value here? p. p is this value. p is 1 and q is 2. Let us see the marking scheme. So, you are getting Minus 2.7.7, 2 marks. And the equation, 1 mark. And writing the minimum point, minus 1, 2, 1 mark. And writing down the equation is 2 marks. So, how many marks altogether? We have to give 10 marks. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 marks given to that question as well. Question number 3. This is about statistics question. 
Information on the runs scored by a cricket team in 40 matches they played during the last year is given in the following frequency distribution. Intervals are given. Here there is a gap in between numbers. So those are class limits. And number of matches given. So the total should be 40 because it's given 40 matches. Taking the mid value of the interval 175 to 185 as the assumed mean. So this one as the assumed mean, find the mean number of runs this team scored in a match to the nearest whole number and thereby find the total number of runs that this team can be expected to score in the 60 matches that will be held this year. So let's do that part. So it says the mid value of this one. So 175 to 185. The mid values we have to calculate. Mid value. We take that one as x. Mid value. Add and divide by 2. So here we can say that's the assumed mean. Hundred and seventy five, hundred and eighty five divided by two. What's the value? You get hundred and eighty. So seventy five and eighty five, that's hundred and eighty. So you can add it and divide. Sixteen three divided by two, that's hundred and eighty. So hundred and eighty is here. And here the difference is 11, 85 and 74, 11. 11 is the difference. So you have to subtract 11. So 169. Then subtract 11, you get 85. Then subtract 11, subtract, so you get 74. Again, this one becomes 136. Now here, at 11 here, 191. When you add 11, 202, add 11 here, 13, 224. Now we can find out, this is the assumed mean, so the deviation becomes 0. So the difference is 11, minus 11, minus 22, minus 33 and minus 44. Here 11, 22, 33 and 44. And we need to find out the multiplication, FD. Frequency and the deviation. 2 times minus 44, minus 88. 4 times 33, 132, that's minus. 5 times 22, 110, minus. 6 times 11, minus 66. And here you get 0 and all the other values are positive. 11 times 5, 55. 22 times 4, 88. 3 times 33, 99. 3 times 44, 132. Now we'll add the positive values. You get 10, 19, 24. 2 remaining. 10, 19, 20, 24, 27, and here 3. And here are negative values. 10, 16, 1 remaining, 9, 12, 13, 19, 1 remaining, 2, 3. 396 and 374, you get negative value. 
is the negative value 396 and 374 22 so minus 22 is the total so how you find out the mean mean is assumed mean Take this one as a plus sigma f d over sigma f. That's the formula. Now substitute 180 minus 22 over total is 40. Divide by 10. get 2.2 divided by 4 or you can say 180 minus 0 0.4 times 5 20 for 20 again 5 so subtract 0 0.55 from 180 you get 179 Point four five correct to the nearest whole number. This is hundred and seventy nine. That's the mean value. So, what is the mean value? Number of runs. Mean number of runs this team scored in a match. So, that's hundred and seventy nine. So how will we do the last part? It says thereby find the total number of runs this team can be expected to score in 60 matches. So one match this number total score is 179 into 60 because this is about 60 matches. So 0, 6 times 9, 54, 6 times 7, 42, plus 5, 47, 4 remaining, 6 times 1, 6, plus 4, 10. So 10,740 runs in 60 matches. So let's see how we can give marks for this one. So let's see the marking scheme. So we can give 136 all these mid values. One mark. And then deviation. One mark. And total here. Calculating FD. All one mark and here total one mark and calculating the assumed mean also we can give one mark so five marks for that then calculating the mean value you are getting two marks up to this point you are getting two marks Two marks here and final part multiply this by 60 10,741 mark so all together 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 marks for this part so let's do the next one show that the maximum number of runs that this team may have scored in total in the 10 matches in which they scored the most number of runs during the last year is less than 2170 runs. So what they asked to show maximum number of runs that this team may have scored in total. So in the 10 matches in which they scored. So what's the last 10 matches? 3, 3, 6, so these 3. Those are the last 
10 matches and we have to take the maximum number of runs. Maximum number of runs 207, 218 and 229. And it says which they scored the most number of runs during the last year is less than 2170 runs. So let's consider if it's 207, so I'll write runs, total runs is equal to, if it's 207 maximum, how many games? Four. And if it's 218, how many games? Three. If it's 229 is the maximum, that's three games. So what's the total you get? You just multiply and add it. Four times seven, 28. Four times two, eight. Then three times eight, 24. Three times one, three plus two, five. Three times two, six. Three times nine, 27. Three times two, six plus two, eight. Three times two, six. Add all these, you get the answer. 12 plus 7, 19, and 16 here, 9 plus 6, 15, 21. So all together, 2,169. That's the maximum number of runs for the last 10 games. So how you get marks here? This is 2,169 and you have to say this is less than 2,170. We'll write that also. This number is less than 2,170 and by how many runs it's low? Just by one run. You can say one run less only one run less than 2170 so let's see how many marks two marks just one mark for calculating the total and saying this one is less than 2170 one mark so we gave before eight marks and these two all together 10 marks Question number four, you get three parts there. So you have to use logarithmic tables for part three. A solid right circular cylindrical metal block of base eight, base radius eight. So we'll draw the diagram. So cylindrical shape, base radius eight centimeters, and the height 10 centimeters melted in 12 identical small solid right circular cones are made. So small cones, that's 12 cones are made. The height of the cone is 6 centimeters. So this is 6 centimeters. In making these a volume 125.6 cubic centimeters of metal is wasted. So that means when you melt this one, you get this plus 125.6 cubic centimeter. That's wasted. Then taking 3.14 as the value of pi, calculate the volume of the cylindrical metal block. First part is just find the volume of this. So shall we do that? Volume of this one. What's the formula? Pi r squared h. So all these formulae given in the first page. So make sure that you read carefully. It's not given in this question but it's there in the front page of paper 2. Volume, pi r squared h, pi 22, you can't say take 22 over 7. So what is the pi value? 3.14 
R. 8. So, 8 squared. H is 10. So, when you multiply this by 10, you get 31.4 multiplied by 8 squared. That's 64. So, what's the volume? You do long multiplication. 31.4 multiplied by 64. 60 and 4. 24. 8. 18. Then 4 times 4, 16. 4 times 1, 4 plus 1, 5. 4 times 3, 12. Now add it. 9, 10, 10, 2. Now keep the decimal point. So you have to keep one decimal point here. This is the answer. So what's the answer? 2009.6 cubic centimeters. So let's give marks. So according to the marking scheme, you are getting two marks. Two marks for finding the volume of the cylinder. We'll take the next one. Find the volume of a cone that is made and show that the base radius R of the cone is given by R squared, 157 over 6.28. So let's see. So we don't know the radius, so we'll put this is R. So what's the volume of the cone? Now, first, we have to subtract this amount from the volume we found in part 1. That's the volume of 12 cones. First, we'll find out volume of 12 cones. You take... 2009.6 and subtract 125.6 cubic centimeters. That's for 12 cones. But we need volume of one cone. Divide this by 12. 12 times 1, 12. 6 remaining, 68. 12 times 5, 60. 8 is there. 84 means 12 times 7. So, 157 cubic centimeters is the volume of one cone. Now, you can find out R from that. So, what's the volume of the cone? One third pi R squared H is equal to 157. That's the volume of the cone. Now, plug the values one third pi. Pi means 3.14 here. R squared, we don't know. H is 6 centimeters. Let's see, 6 centimeters. And that's 157. Now solve and simplify for R squared. We can divide by 3. That's 2 here. 2 times 3.14. 6.28 R squared is 157. Then what's R squared? 157 over 6.28. That's what we need to prove. So how many marks for this one? So you are getting two marks for finding this volume. And then divide by 12, finding volume of a cone is one mark. Everything, one mark. 
7 the, the whole part 1 mark so the whole question you get 3 marks so we gave 2 marks before this is 3 5 marks and the next one you have to use log tables and you get 5 marks there Find the value of r squared using the logarithm table and then obtain the value of r. So what's r squared? We found out 157 over 6.28. So they are asking first find the value of r squared. Take logarithms. Log r squared is equal to log of this. And we know division becomes subtraction of logarithms. Log 157 minus log 6.28 is log r squared. So before we use the logarithmic table, so write in scientific notation and this is power 2. So 2 point something you are getting here. This is power 0, so 0 point something. Now we can refer the table. So let's refer the table. We need fifteen seven. We need fifteen seven. So what's fifteen seven? One nine five nine. One nine five nine. Sixty two eight. Sixty two eight is in the other table. So you have to refer the other table. Sixty two eight. Sixty two eight is here. Seven nine. Eight zero seven nine eight zero seven nine eight zero. Now we can subtract two point one nine five nine zero point seven nine eight zero. When you subtract, you get one point three nine seven nine. So, you need to find out the anti-log value to find out R square. So, R squared value is anti-log of 1.3979. Now, again refer the table and see where you get 3979. 39. 3979. It's exactly 25. 25, 0. So you can say this is 25 is r squared. Now you can find out r square root of this one is r. So how you get r square root of 25? That means plus or minus, but this is about radius. You can't get a negative value. So square root of 25 is 5 and the units 5 centimeters, I think. Let's see. This is about, yeah, all these measurements in centimeters. So the radius is Five centimeters. So let's give marks for this one. So five marks you are getting. So one mark for writing the log and one mark for subtraction of logarithms and then one mark for finding the log values and one mark for antilog value and finally one mark for finding square root of r square that's five centimeters so five marks and before we gave five marks all together 
10 marks for that question as well. Question number 5. So this is about constructing simultaneous equation. So we have to construct an equation and then solve, find the answer. That means take the difference. So everything using the values you get from this simultaneous equation. So let's do that. Part A. A hall is decorated with white lotus flowers and red lotus flowers. Three times the number of white lotus flowers used for this is 100 more than the number of red lotus flowers used. Each white lotus flower is 12 rupees and each red lotus flower is 11 rupees. The cost of the lotus flowers used for the decoration is 1600 rupees. Take the number of white lotus flowers used for the decoration as x and the number of red lotus flowers used as y and construct a pair of simultaneous equations using the above information. So this is the important part. So which one is x? x is white lotus and y you have to take as red lotus. Now you can construct two equations. What's the first equation? It says three times the number of white lotus flowers. That means 3x. This is 100 more than, this is 100 more than the number of red lotus flowers used. 100 plus 1. Or you can take the difference and write 100. So I can rewrite this 3x minus y equals 100. 100 more. That's our first equation. And what about the second one? That's about the cost. Each white lotus flower is 11 rupees. 12 rupees for white one. So how many white ones are there? X. So that means the total cost is 12X. Each red one is 11 rupees and Y number 11Y. That's the total. It's 1600 rupees. That's our second equation. So in this part they are asked just to write down the two equations. So let's give marks. So you are getting 100 plus y equals 3x or the other way around one mark and 12x plus 11 by 1600 is one mark. Now we'll try to solve this. Solve the pair of simultaneous equations and find separately the number of white lotus flowers and number of red lotus flowers used for the decoration. So solve and find x and y. We need the two equations. 3x minus y is 100. 12x plus 12, 11y. 12x plus 11y is 1600. What's the easiest way to, really you can solve. I can multiply the first equation by 11. I want to make the coefficient of y equal. 11 times 3, 33. This is 11y. This is 1100. And now we can add 2 and 3. Because this is plus 11y. The other one is minus. Plus and minus get cancelled out when you add the two equations. Add it. You get 45x is equal to 2700. So what's x? 2700 divided by 45. 9 times 5, 9 times 300. 300 divided by 5, that's 60. X is 60. Take any equation. I'll take the first one. 3x. 3 times 60 minus y equals 100. 
Now find the y value. Y becomes, this is 180 minus 100. Y you can take it to this side and 100 to this side. So 3 into 60 minus 100. So that's 80. So you can write number of white lotus flowers, number of white ones, 60, number of red lotus flowers, 80. So how you get marks? Now we gave two marks for constructing the two equations. And then you get two marks for finding the x value. Up to this point, two marks. And then substitution and simplifying and getting the y value, you are getting three marks. Three and two, five marks here. Let's take the third one, the third part. Show that the difference between the amount spent on the red lotus flowers and the amount spent on the white lotus flowers is more than 150 rupees. So you can take the difference. So first you can find out amount spent. On which one? So red one first. So red ones, that's 80. Each one is 11. 11 times 80. 880 rupees. Amount spent on... White lotus flowers, 12 rupees and 60 white ones are there, 720. So what's the difference? Difference is equal to 880 minus 720. So that's 100. 60 rupees, so that's more than 150, so by how much? 10 rupees more, you can say 10 rupees is more, so the statement is, you can say true. So let's see, you get one mark for calculating the total 720 and 880, just one mark and it's, it's greater than 150. So the whole thing is just one mark you are getting. So we gave before 2 and 5, 7. And this one, 8. And there's another part, part B. So two marks for this one. Make H the subject of the formula. That's a square root sign. How you get rid of this square root? You have to square both sides. So square both sides. U squared is equal to 2GH. When you square both sides, you can get rid of the square root sign. Now you need to make h as the subject. So we need to take 2g to the other side. This is multiplication. Opposite of multiplication is division. So you divide by 2g. So what's the equation? h equals u squared over 2g. So you are getting two marks for that. So we gave 10 marks for the 
four question. Let's do question number six. It says the figure shows a lamina in the shape of a trapezium. With its measurements, if the area of the lamina is 20 square meters, show that x satisfies the quadratic equation. Find the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides of the lamina and show that the distance is less than half the length of AB. Take the value root 6 as 2.45. So we have to first find out the area of the lamina. This is a trapezium. How we find out the area? Area is at the two parallel lengths. X plus 3 and X plus 5. Divide by 2 and multiply by the perpendicular height. That's X. So when you simplify this, you get 2x, x and x, 2x, 3 plus 5, 8, divide by 2 into x. And here, I can simplify this one first. Divide by 2 both the numbers, I can divide or you can first take 2 out, that's common. And now you can divide by 2, 2 get cancelled out. So you get x plus 4 into x, that becomes x squared plus 4x is the area that's in square meters. And it's given, it's 20. So we can equate this area to 20. x squared plus 4x is equal to 20. Take all the terms to one side so you can say x squared plus 4x minus 20 is equal to 0. So that's what you need. So what's the equation? You got x squared plus 4x minus 20. So we'll give marks up to that point. So let's see. Finding area, this one mark and writing down the equation, two marks. So we give three marks for that. Now, the next one, find the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides. So that's X. That means you are asked to find out x. Now look at this one. It's given, take the value of root 6 as 2.45. That means you can't factorize this equation, quadratic equation. Either you can use quadratic formula or completing square method. So let's use completing square method to solve this. So you have to first take minus 20 to the other side. You take 20. Minus 20 becomes 20. Then take the x term coefficient, divide by 2 and square it. That's the constant term you have to add. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So add 4 to make, get a perfect square. So 20 plus 4. You have to do the same thing for both sides because this is an equation. So this becomes x plus 2 whole thing squared. That's a square term. Square root of x squared and square root of 4. And the sign is plus. That's equal to 24. Now take square root both sides. x plus 2 becomes plus or minus square root of 24. How can you write 24? What's the square number? Maximum square number is 4. That's 4 times 6. When you take the square root separately, you get plus or minus 2 root 6 is the value. So what is x then? 
x becomes minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 6. So, two solutions are there. Minus 2, minus 2 root 6 or minus 2, plus 2 root 6. This is a length, x is the height. You cannot get a negative solution. So, you can ignore this answer. You are getting x as negative here. So, only take this one. So, what's the value? Subtract 2. Yeah, first you substitute root 6 value. That's given as 2.45. First multiply. 2 times 5, 10. 8, 9. 2 times 2, 4. So subtract 2 now. You get 2.9 is the x value and this is in meters. What's the next part? Show that this distance is less than half the length of AB. So we can check what is AB and divide by 2 and check with the answer. So, x plus 3, AB is x plus 3. Now, substitute x, 2.9 plus 3, you get 5.9 meters. AB divide by 2. Divide by 2, you get 2 times 2, 4, 2 times 9, 18, and 5. So 2.95. This one is less than that. So this one is 2.95. You can say as 2.9 is less than 2.95. This is true. Show that this length we found says show that the distance is less than half the length of AB. So we prove that. So let's see how many marks. So up to this point we gave 3. Now we'll see 1 and 2 marks up to this point, 2 marks and then up to x, finding the x value, that's 3 marks, 2.9, 3 marks and finding a, b, 1 mark and showing half of a, b, 2.95 and then that is less than 2.95, one mark there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and this 3, 10 marks, 7 plus 3, 10. So this is the sixth question, so in part A, you have to select five questions out of these six. And now we'll consider part B. Part B, starting from question seven, and you have to again select five questions from seven to twelve. So this one is about number patterns. And let's do that. A flower bed consists of 50 rows of red flowering shrubs and white flowering shrubs. There are red flowering shrubs at both ends of each row and between every two consecutive red flowering shrubs. There is a white flowering shrub. When you read that question, what do you see? So that means here... 
both ends red ones and in between white ones. So that means red shrubs, to number of red shrubs in one row is one more than number of white shrubs. That's what you can get from the first sentence. Then it says there are 13 flowering shrubs in the first row. 13 flowering shrubs in the first row and each row thereafter has one red flowering shrub and one white flowering shrub more than the previous row. Write the number of flowering shrubs there are in the first, second and third. So that's not a hard one. It says first one, 30. Here it says thereafter each, there are 13 flowering shrubs in the first one and then one red flowering shrub and one white flowering shrub more than the previous row. So one and one becomes two. So two more than the previous. 13 plus 2, 15. 15 plus 2, 17. So those are the three values. So three rows. How many flowering shrubs are there in the 28th row? We have to take this as the first term. So this is an arithmetic sequence progression and you can find out T28. What's the formula for finding nth term? The first term plus n minus 1d. A is 13. N is here 28. So 28 minus 1, 27. And what's the difference? Difference you can take any term minus the previous one. So the difference is 2. Always 2 more than the previous one. 13 plus. First you have to do multiplication according to Bodmas. 2 times 7, 14. 2 times 2, 4 plus 1, 5. 67 shrubs are there in 28th row. So how many marks given to the first one? one. And this one? Now let's do the next one. How many rows are there with less than 90 flowering shrubs? So 90, less than 90. So that means the nth term is less than 90. Tn is less than 90 given. So you are asked to find out n. So you can use the formula A, 13 plus N minus 1, T is 2. Then you can subtract 13 first. 90 minus 13, 77. Now expand brackets to N minus 2. It's less than 77, 2n becomes 77 plus 2. Take minus 2 to the other side, 79. We are dividing by 2, so nothing happens to the sign. You get 39.5. But it says n is less than 39.5. So, what's the maximum n value? That's 39. That means 39 rows you get less than 90 shrubs. Less than 90 shrubs. So, you get one mark for writing this one. That's an inequality and two marks for solving. So we gave this one three and four marks, seven marks for the first two parts. And next part, 
find the total number of flowering shrubs there are in the flower bed. How many more red flowering shrubs are there in the flower bed than white flowering shrubs? So let's do the first one. Total. How many rows are there all together? It was there in the first part. 50 rows all together. So you can find out the total by taking S50. S50 is the total. So what is the formula you can use? N divided by 2. So 50 divided by 2. You can't use the first term and the last term there because we don't know the last term. So you can use 2a plus n minus 1d formula. 2 times a. 13 is the first, first term plus n minus 1. That's 49d is 2. You get 25. What's the value here? 2 times 13, 26. 49 times 2, 98. 25 times addition of these two, 124. So 25 times 4, 100. 10 remaining, 25 times 2, 50. 50 plus 10, 60. 6 remaining, 25 times 1, 25 plus 6. 31. So all together, 3100 shrubs are there. And we need to find out how many more red flowering shrubs are there in the flower bed than white flowering shrubs. So we found out from the first sentence, each row, one red flowering shrub is more than white one. So how many rows are there? 50. So how many extra red shrubs are there? 50. Because each row, one red more. So you can write each row, one red shrub is more than white. One shrub is more than white shrubs for 50 rows, 50 more red shrubs because it says 50 rows, each one, one extra red shrub, 1 into 50. 50. So you get two marks for this one, finding the total and writing down this one, just one mark. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here, three, four, five, six, seven. And three, ten marks. Question number eight. You have to use the compass and the ruler. That's a construction question. Use only a straight edge with a centimeter millimeter scale and a pair of compasses for the following geometric constructions. Show the construction lines clearly. Don't erase after you draw the construction lines. Don't erase that. Construct a straight line segment AB of length 9 cm and its perpendicular bisector. So let's do that. First, you need to draw a line segment. Now take the compass and the ruler. You need to measure... 9 centimeters. So take the ruler, measure 9 centimeters, and you can mark the points.
two points that's a b a b nine centimeters and it's perpendicular bisector so you need the compass again how you draw the perpendicular bisector you take the length more than the half of the length AB, something like this, and you keep the compass on top of the point A, and you can you can draw an arc above as well as below, and keep the same distance on and the compass on top of B and you can mark the two points. You get the two intersecting points. Now connect this. That's the perpendicular bisector for these two points A and B. That's the first part. Construct a semicircle with diameter AB and, the, and label its center as C. So, this is the perpendicular bisector. So, that means this is 90. So, these two lengths are equal. So, AB is the diameter means center should be here. So, C is the center. You take the compass. Keep. CB or you can take CA as the radius and you have to draw a semicircle. So we'll draw this way a semicircle and the third part mark the point P on the semicircle such that AP is equal to the radius of the semicircle. And draw the triangle APB. Take the compass. Now we need to mark the P point. We know that it's the length of AP is equal to the radius. So we'll take the AC length and keep on top of this semicircle and mark the other point. That's the P value. Now you can connect. AP and PB and complete APB triangle. So that's the third part. So we'll give marks for these three steps. One mark for AB line segment. Then two marks for the perpendicular bisector. And then again marking, drawing the semicircle one mark and drawing, marking the P point one mark. Five marks there. Let's do the next part. Next part, construct the trapezium APQB such that Q lies on the semicircle, here on this semicircle, and construct the bisector of PQB. Now, what's the property of a trapezium? It's one pair of parallel line. So, you need to draw APQB. So, here we need to draw a parallel line to AB along. That's the first step. So we'll use the compass to do that. So we'll use the property of a parallelogram and construct the parallel line. So I can take the length AB and mark that length from P. And then Take the distance AP this AP length and mark 
from B. So I'm trying to complete a parallelogram. Now we have that point, intersecting point, connect this P and that point. That's the parallel line. That's the parallel line to AB along P. And it says Q lies on the semicircle. So that means Q should be here. Now you can complete APQB trapezium. Then construct the bisector of PQB. PQB angle bisector also we have to draw. So what you do? You take the compass. You keep on top of the Q point and you can take any distance and you can mark the two arcs and then you can take the same distance or different distance. I'll increase that and I have to draw the other two arcs. Keep the same distance here and draw the other arc. So here this is the intersecting point. Now you can connect this Q point and this one that's the angle bisector of PQB. Now the next part find the magnitude of PQB, PQB this angle. So we can find without measuring because can you see this Perpendicular bisector here, angle bisector is this one. And here this angle is equal to this angle. And it passes through C point. So according to the diagram, you can say these all are radii. So this is also equal. This is equal. So from here to here, that's 60 degrees here. This is an equilateral triangle. So this is 60 and this is the angle bisector. So this is also 60. So altogether PQB is 60 plus 60, 120. You can check it with the protractor. So let's just measure and see. Here you are getting 120 degrees. So either measuring or you can easily get this because this line, the angle bisector is passes through the center. So you don't need to measure. But without measuring also you can do using the theory here. So how many marks there? So you are getting two marks for constructing the trapezium and one mark for finding this angle and we can give another one mark for drawing the angle bisector. So let's see whether we gave 10 marks, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that means we have to give another one more mark. So one more mark for the angle bisector. So now let's see 3, 4, 5 and 5 marks here. So altogether 10 marks for the construction question. Let's do question number 9. This is about Venn diagrams and we'll do it here. The following Venn diagram has been drawn to represent information on the selection of the questions A, B and C by 100 students who faced a certain examination. So easily you can mark 100 there. Then 
The number of students who selected both questions B and C is 10, while no student selected only the questions B and C from these three questions. So B and C. Here only there are no students and together 10 means this is 10. So this is 0. We can put 0 there. Nobody's there. The number of students who selected both questions A and B but not C is 20. A and B but not C, that's 20 here means this one is 20. The number of students who selected only questions C from these three questions is 8. So that's 18. Copy the Venn diagram onto your answer script and include the above information in it. So we did that and we need to do this part. If the number of students who selected question C is equal to the number of students who selected both questions A and B. How many students selected both questions A and C but not question B? A and C not question B means this part we have to find. So how we can find it says the number of students who selected question number C, that's this one, is equal to the number of students who selected both questions A and B. A and B, that's 30. A and B means not only A and B, all together. So 30. So this becomes 30. Now easily you can find out this value 30 minus 10 plus 8, 18. So we can do this part 30 minus 10 plus 8. That's 30 minus 18, 12. So this is 12. Part 3. 15 students selected only question B. 15 here. From these three questions, the number of students who selected question A is 10 more than the number of students who selected question B. How many students selected question B? 30, 45. Then A becomes 55. 10 more than that. Then they are asking how many students selected only question A. This one. So 55 is the total. Subtract 20, 12 and 10. 30 plus 12, 42. So you get 30. So that's here. The next part, from these 100 students, how many students did not select any of the three questions A, B, C? That means outside. So let's do that. That means 100 is the total and you have to subtract all these values inside A, B, C circles. So we'll take 55, 8 and 15. Hundred minus you get seventy eight. Twenty two. So this is twenty two. Let's give marks. So you are getting four marks for the first part. So copy the diagram and marking the relevant information and part two. Getting 12, you get 2 marks. And part 3, getting 13, you get 2 marks. And last part, 100 minus this one, you get 2 marks. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 4, 10 marks for that question. Let's do question number 10. 
the figure shows four points A, B, C and D on a level ground is located to the south of A. D is located south. So this is north, so this is south. That means this is the vertical line. The bearing of B from A, bearing of B from A is given 130, 145. So that means when you extend this line here, this is the bearing, 145 is given here. AD is 20. That's 20 meters. DC is 42 meters given. So you have to draw again this and mark this information. Then using trigonometric ratios, find the distance DB to the nearest whole number. Now here, this is not. And this one we have to take, this one is 90 degrees because on the same level ground. D is located to the south of AB and then it says B to the east, B to the east. So this is vertical, this is horizontal, this is 90 degrees. And what is the suitable trigonometric ratio? To find out db, db, we can find out this angle, 180 minus 145, 35 degrees here and we can use the opposite and adjacent ratio, that stand ratio to find out db. And 35 is opposite db and the adjacent 20. So db becomes 20 times tan 35. So what's the value? Tan 35, we can use the tangent table and see where's 35. And 35.7 not not 2. And that's multiplied by 20. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times 7, 14. And you have to keep 4 decimal places. So 14.0040 to the nearest whole number, 14 meters. That's db. And show that 2 times bcd is greater than dab. So that means we have to find out these angles. So what's that? bcd. This angle and DAB. DAB is 35. So we'll find out this angle. So we need to find BCD. So this is 42. So we'll do it on the next page. So we'll take the next page and see we need this one and this is 20, 42. So this is 42 meters and we found out this is 14 meters from the previous part. So what's the ratio sign? This is opposite and this is hypotenuse to this angle. So you can say sine BCD is 14 over 42. Divide. 7 times 2, 7 times 6, 
2 times 1, 2 times 3, 1 third. 1 over 3, we know, divide 1 by 3, 0 0.3333. Now we can use inverse value to find out the BCD angle. Sine inverse of 0.3333. Let's use the sign table and see where you get 0.3333. Here 3338 is there. So here another 22 we need. 22 from 8. 19, 28. Nineteen twenty-eight, nineteen degrees and twenty-eight minutes is the BCD angle. Now we'll see what they want. They want double of BCD. So two times BCD is two times. 19 and 28, 2 times 8, 16, 2 times 2, 4 plus 1, 5, 2 times 19, that's 38 degrees. So that value, you have to show that, that value is greater than DAB, DAB is 35. So definitely this is greater than 35. That's true. So that's what you need to show. Let's see. We didn't give marks for this part. So the first part, tan 35 and finding this one and drawing the diagram and marking everything, seven marks. So, three marks for the diagram and four marks here. So, 14 marks. Then the second part finding sine BCD, one mark. And inverse and find 1928, that's one mark. Multiply by two and show that this is greater than 35 degrees, one mark. So seven plus three, 10 marks for the whole question. Question number 11. So you have to prove using all these, using the diagram. So let's do separately. In the triangle ABC, shown in the figure, AB is equal to AC. So you can mark these two lengths are equal. That means this angle is equal to this angle, isosceles triangle. The side AB produced to D and the side AC produced to E such that BD, BD length is equal to CE. Show that CBD angle, CBD angle, this one is equal to BCE angle, this one. It's not hard. First, we'll do that part. Now, we know AB is equal to AC, it's given and we know opposite angles are equal in isosceles triangle. So ABC angle is equal to ACB angle and we'll put X, this is X, then this is a straight line. So what is DBC angle? 180 minus X. 
then what is ECB angle or oh, we'll write BCE BCE angle is 180 minus 6 so these two are equal they are 40 BC is equal to BCE and here you can write because of straight angle that's the first part and show the triangle CBD and BCE are congruent so let's do that now B C E B C E and C B D these two triangles so you can mark it we want to show this triangle and this triangle both are congruent so let's take part two in CD triangle and CBD triangles when you consider we know BC is the common length BC is equal to BC common then two angles we found that those are equal the two angles from the previous part we found that's equal D B C DBC angle and BCE angle equal. We prove that. We have one and the lengths are equal. BD is equal to CE. Two lengths and included angle equal. That means the two triangles are congruent. BCD triangle is congruent to CBD triangle. What is the case? Side angle side because the included angle is given with the two sides. So that's how we can show the two triangles are congruent. So let's give marks. One mark for showing these two angles are equal and three marks given for congruency showing these two triangles are congruent so all together you get four marks from for this part let's take the next one part two show that the triangle ade a D E is isosceles and then show that A B C is equal to A D E. These two angles are equal. From the previous part, we know that these two lengths are equal, and we found is an isosceles. This is x and x these two lengths are equal and this is equal to this one and congruent these two triangles are congruent now we have to show that ade is a is an isosceles triangle we know that from the previous part it's given information given ab equals ac and BD is given as equal to CE. Both given. We'll add it. 1 plus 2. AB plus BD is equal to AC plus CE. What's that? AC plus CE is AE. AB and BD, AD. So this length is equal to this length. So that means this is isosceles triangle. So A D E is isosceles. That's the first part. 
then the next part it says show that ABC ABC angle is equal to ADE this angle and this angle these two are equal so we'll take the ratio between these two now we know the lengths are equal we'll divide one and two what happens when you divide one divide by two a b to b d ratio is the same as a c to c e what it means here to here ratio is same as here to here ratio so the ratios are equal so ratios are equal means these two triangles are similar or you can say these two lines are parallel ABC triangle and ADE triangles both are similar as well as DE and BC both are parallel so the ratios are equal so you can say as ratios are equal the BC length is parallel to DE then we know these are corresponding angles the two lines are parallel so we can say these two angles what are the two angles? ABC angle is equal to ADE angle because of corresponding angles. So that's the last part. Here is triangle. Okay, so let's give marks. So we can give one mark for adding and and writing this is an isosceles triangle. One mark there. Then Two marks here showing that the two lines are parallel and the corresponding angles are equal. Two marks. So two and one, three marks. Earlier we gave four. So seven marks we have already given. So we have given earlier 4 and this one 3 7 marks and let's take next part show that the triangle ABC and ADE are equiangular and then show that 3BC is equal to 2DE when BD equals half AB now we found out the two lines are parallel and this angle is equal to this one. But we know this is equal to this one as well. And we showed that this is also equal. So we did that. Now we'll take the two triangles. ABC triangle and ADE triangle. A angle is common. Then B angle here is equal to D here. C angle is equal to E angle. So that means ABC triangle and ADE triangle are equiangular. 
the two triangles are equiangular and then show that 3 BC 3 times BC is 2 times DE but you have to take BD as half AB before here it's given these lengths are equal so let's do that Starting from this part, BD equals half AB. So that means 2BD equals AB. This is BD, so that means 2BD. So this is 1, this becomes 2. So that means the length is divided. AD is divided according to 2 to 1 ratio because AB becomes 2 times BD. Then you need BC. Now we found out these two are equiangular. That means similar triangles. So similar Triangle. So we can say equiangular and similar as well. Similar triangles are there. So similar triangles, the corresponding ratios are equal. So we have BC and DE. What's the ratio? BC to DE should be equal to 2 to 3 ratio because when you take this one, this is 2, the bigger one, 2 plus 1, 3. So 2 to 3 ratio is BC to DE. Then by cross multiplying, you can say 3BC is equal to 2DE. So that's what you need to prove. 3BC is equal to 2DE. So let's see. You are getting 2 marks. 2 marks for showing that these are equiangular. And we need to give one more mark. Then the ratio is equal. And here we can say, I'll write one more step to make it clear because these are similar. We did, we can write down the ratio AB to AD. Then we can say AB is 2BD and 2BD is that one and AD is 2 and 1, 3 BD. That's BC over DE. If you are not clear how to how you get two thirds, you can show this one. So from this also you get the same answer. So two marks we gave for this part and one mark for showing this equation. So that's 3, 3, 6 and 4, 10 marks. And we'll do last question in this paper. As shown in the figure, PAE and PBF are two tangents to the circle with center O. And we have to mark all the information and do it separately. So let's do on the next slide. So two tangents are there drawn at the points A and B on the circle. BC is a diameter. So that means this is the center. Center is the O. Copy the figure onto your answer script and join OA. This one. And show that OA, OAPB 
is a cyclic quadrilateral. We know tangent and this is the radius. Both are perpendicular. So you can write this is also 90, this is also 90. So you can write OAP angle is 90 degrees and OBP angle is 90. You can give the reason as radius is perpendicular to the tangent. Then what you think about the sum of opposite angles in a quadrilateral. So you can add it OAP plus OBP. That's 90 plus 90. That's 180. Opposite angles are equal to 180. So that means it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Opposite angles add up to 180. You can say OAPB is a cyclic quadrilateral. So how many marks for that step? So how many marks for that step? You are getting three marks. Then we'll take the second part. Join CA. CA. We join before O. And OP. And show that ACB angle, ACB angle, and POB, POB angle, both are equal, and EAC, EAC, this angle is equal to O. A, B. So you have to connect A, B also. O, A, B means this angle. So let's do that. Look at carefully the diagram. This is the tangent drawn to this circle and this is a chord. A, B is a chord. This angle and AC also a chord. This is the angle in between the tangent and the chord is equal to the opposite interior angle. This one. Why? Alternate segment theorem. So we can write EAC angle is equal to O B A angle. Alternate segment theorem. This angle is equal to this angle. But we know these two lengths are equal. Radii. O A is equal to OB, that's radii, then you can say OBA angle is equal to OAB angle, opposite here because this is an isosceles triangle. These two are equal, that means these two are equal. So straight away you can say from these two equations, 1 and 2. One From 1 and 2, you can say EAC angle is equal to 
O A B. That's one one part. We'll try to do the next part. Now we have to show the other part. Now, what's the other part? A C B and P O B. A C B and this one and P O B. This angle. So these two angles we have to show. These are equal. Now look at carefully. These are the two tangents and this is the line joining the center and the outside point. So this angle is the angle at the center bisect each other. So if this is y, this is y. So first you can write that one. A O P angle is same as P O B angle. That's y. I can say y because Tangent, tangent, and the line joining, and line joining, line joining, center, line joining, center. Bisect, bisect the ang bisect angle at the center. We we'll write angle at the center. You don't need to write down everything. Just we know because of two tangents and the line joining the center and the outside point. So the ang this angle bisect each other. That's why. Now here when you take OAC triangle, OC is equal to OA. Why? Radii. So if this is A, this is also A. Now look at carefully the diagram. These are the two interior angles and this is the exterior angle. So you can say 2A equals 2Y. Exterior angle is equal to opposite angle sum. Sum of opposite angles you can write. Again divide by 2A equals Y. A angle is equal to Y angle. So what is A and what is Y? A we can write OC A. Or you can write this one ACB. ACB is A. ACB is A. So what's the Y angle? Y angle is the other angle there, POB. POB is Y angle. So straight away you get these two are equal. So that's the proof of this. So let's give marks. So you are getting three marks for this part. And Four marks here you are getting showing this part. EAC is equal to OAB. Four marks. So four plus three is seven and we gave three marks for the first part. So ten marks altogether. So this is the last question in your paper. So we did all twelve questions in paper too. So make sure that you do the whole paper and then watch my video to check your answers.